the fun and creative and easy way to assemble the classic rose. Now, not only is the classic rose a beautiful flower, but one of the facts that I love is that it's created by one of our designers and her name is Olivia Rose. Doesn't get any better than that. So the classic rose is the dye. It's a thinlet dye. I'm gonna show you the technique that I use here with our permanent markers to give it the um, little two-tone effect. And I'm gonna be doing it in this uh, soft limoncello color. Now we have a series of crepe paper colors that come out in um, different color combinations and it gives you the ability to create the leaves as well as any color flowers that you'd like to create. So our uh, thinlet dies, they come with the multiple um, petals that you will need to create the particular flower. Like I said, I'm doing the classic rose, but we have the ranunculus, we have wild peony, we have carnations, and those will be coming up later in series with some of my fellow creative designers. So the classic rose, it comes with a series of thinlets. Now you'll be able to cut more than one at a time when you run it through on your uh, big shop machine. You run it through the machine and you can cut these two and there you go with two petals already. You're also able to cut more than one piece of cardstock if it's not too thick and two pieces of crepe paper at the same time. You might lose a little bit of the texture um, finish on the crepe paper, but it actually does uh, come back to its normal state um, afterwards, but I like cutting one at a time just to be safe. So this is the larger one. This is two petals that are connected. They're connected only on the die itself, but once you cut it, they're individual because there's a gap right here and the blades give you two individual um, petals. So that's for the larger ones. You would cut five at a time of that. Five, not at five at a time. You would cut five petals total to create the actual rose. This is the middle size. Now you'll see that this one's partial, just a little bit bigger than this one. You'll still also, um, you can either cut uh, five total or six total of the same size or just run it through. It's not once you manipulate the actual crepe paper or the cardstock petals, it doesn't matter. Um, you can't really tell the difference in size when you're doing it like this. So that's the center, the middle size, and this is the smaller one. Now multiple ones of these, um, once you're curled, and uh, manipulated and sculpted, they can create just an individual bud, and I'll show you how that's done also. So these, All of these are able, they have two dies going at the same time, so you, instead of cutting this multiple times, you run it through, you're getting two right there. So like I said, these are two individual petals, so you get a lot, you get to cut multiples at a time. This is the base, so this is the part that is underneath the actual rows. So you would just need one of these, whether it's cardstock or um, crepe paper. And then same with the leaves. You'll get two individual leaves, and the way that you're gonna to want to cut it is on cardstock or the crepe paper. When you cut it for the leaves, it depends on how you wanna stretch it or manipulate it. If you want it to be a wider leaf, and I'll show you how to do that, you would cut it with the um, grains of the crepe paper going horizontally, um, left to right of your, uh, your leaves here. And for the petals, what you want to do is have the grain going vertically. So up and down along the center because that way you can sculpt it around and I'll show you that also. So those are the pieces, those are the five dies that come with the classic rose. So let me put that aside. Um, I'm gonna show you how to create a different way that you can create leaves. This is just doing three stems at one time um, to create one stem with three leaves, but you're just gonna cut them individually. But I'm gonna show you a different way that you can, two different ways that you can create the, the leaf itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera down so you can see me doing the whole thing in action. So I've already have some already cut so you can see how I created those. So what I did is I cut them first and then I took my permanent marker. This is one of our series of markers that coordinate with our color story. And this is the, perm the um, one of the pinks and I just did it along the edge just to give it that two-tone color. Now I have it here in our um, peachy color and I use the same color on here so you can see the difference in how it um, blends on different tones of the crepe paper. So let me bring the camera, or sorry not the camera, the machine forward. This is really quick, let me show you using that smaller petal. This is how you're able to create the rose, the, just the bud itself before it opens and comes to life. So let me move all of these things over and bring my machine to the center center stage. So just to save time, I have all the pieces that I need already cut, but what I want to do is I want to show you how I cut them all together. 
So to save time on the machine, if you can see, I have them all already laid out, ready to go. So I have my crepe paper. This one in particular, it doesn't matter since this is a uniform circle. This is that base piece. It doesn't matter what direction of the grain the actual um, star-shaped base is laying. So the blades can go up or down, doesn't matter on the machine. Here is a petal. So you wanna make sure that the grains here are going vertically along the length of the petal. If I did it like this, I won't be able to manipulate the way I want the petals to curl. So I want to make sure the blade is going vertically against the straight lines of the crepe paper. So let me stand up here so I can get an aerial view of what I'm doing. And I have the leaves already positioned here, ready to cut. It's okay that they overlap because I'm able to um, cut multiples at a time and it won't affect that actual leaf. And so same with this one. Always make sure for most of your petals that most of your flower petals, um, that the grain of the crepe paper is going lengthwise. And I have it on the larger one too. So everything's ready to go. I've got the cutting pad on the bottom and one on the top. I'm going to go ahead and run it through. Put that over here because I will be done with the machine. And then let me show you how all the pieces have been cut. So I've got the larger petals cut beautifully. So if you can see, the grain is vertical, so since I'm gonna want to, and I'll show you how to do it, it just gives you a perfect stretch of the petals to make them more realistic, like an actual. So if you ever know how when you go rose falls off, a petal falls off of a rose and it falls to the tabletop or whatever, it does have that curved effect. So that's why you wanna make sure that your grain is going this direction. So I have these all set. I've got my leaves all set. I've got this star base piece ready. And then my smaller ones as well. And the middle pieces too. So those are all ready. Put this off to the side since I no longer need that. I'm done with the dies. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to make sure that I have the, let me bring this forward so you can see better. I wanted to make sure that I have the, um, any kind of uh, ink that I want to use to create the edge. So what I like to do is I like to use the wider end. So it's personal preference, I think, but the wider one for me is a little bit better because it can be a little quicker. So what I did is just quickly went along the edge. And if you're familiar with a rose that has the different edges, you know that it's not a perfect end edge. So it does kind of, um, flow into with the grain, but you don't want it to flow too heavy because then you won't get a realistic effect. So you're just gonna do a little bit of a border and you don't wanna hold it down too long because it'll really flow. So if you can see here, I've got the edge there all ready to go. So same with any of the other sides, the same idea. You can go all the way to the bottom, from the bottom all the way up and around. And once it's formed and manipulated, you'll really be able to see the edge. So you can just go all the way around. And once it has the other petals next to it and curled up against it and curled up around it, then it um, really comes to life. So hopefully you can see that there. Okay, so those are all set. And I have the other ones already ready to go. So what I like to do is I like to start with the smaller petals. So this is the smaller one. And I'm going to take one, let me color this one because I have one already ready, but I want to make sure that you see how I curled it. So wrong end. So I'm just going to do the edge on this one quickly. Okay. So using our new um, fold and form tool, it's perfect. It has an opening that's a little bit wider. So that's where you would thread your actual petal through. So what I wanna do on the smaller one, I want the first two petals to curl inwards at the top. So they're gonna curl inwards towards each other, towards center. So here's one already done like that. And that just creates a tighter bud in the center. So what you wanna do is you wanna put 
the top corner of your petal into the wider opening and then you're just going to glide it down because it starts to tighten. So if you can see here, the opening gets tighter and tighter. So you just want to bring it down as far as you can, not all the way to the end, but just bring it so you can curl it forward just a little bit. So if you see that, you curled it perfectly. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. So the first two smaller petals, I want them to curl inwards. And if it's not as tight as you want it to be, then you can just manipulate it and curl it around. Sometimes I'll take just a narrow, either a skewer or some type of, this is just a paintbrush, and just bring it tighter, especially for the smaller ones. So if you can see that's curling towards itself in the center, then you can bring it forward. And you're gonna take your thumbnail, your thumbs, and just cup it around it. So as you see, I lost a little bit of my curl but since it already had started to curl, I'm just gonna glide it around one more time around just my narrow piece there, and it did it perfectly. So that's already ready and sculpted. What I'm gonna do with my next one, this is my middle size one. This is the one that was that uh, not so large. It was this size here. I'm gonna do the same thing, except for instead of having the first two curled uh, forwards, I wanna have one curled back and one curled forward. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do the bowl first, just kind of manipulate it around. So it'll kind of give it the circular, realistic the way a real petal looks. So it kind of looks like a, a little cup. So that's all set and ready. You don't wanna have it going too, um, far towards the top. Depends on how open you want your rose to be, but I just kind of did it at the base and towards the center, and the top stayed the way it was originally. Same idea, I'm gonna bring it through the opening, the wider opening, and then I'm gonna curl it backwards, and then this size, I'm gonna curl forward. Bring it down to the tighter area, and I'm gonna curl it forward. So for this, you want to have one curled back, and one curled forward. And if it kind of curls back away, then you just go ahead and redo it the other, uh, redo it with your finger or curl it around um, something else. But you could just kind of recurl it after you manipulate the bowl area. Sometimes it goes back to its original state, like I've said, but you're gonna have one top curled forward and one top curled backwards. So that's an easy way to do it. Another way is you could just take something because this is actually going to be wrapping around. Oops, sorry. This is going to be wrapping around. So another technique is to do it like that and like that. But with the sculpting, um, the fold and form tool is perfect because it tightens it right down there and it gives you a perfect curl just like that. Okay. So all of the ones that are this size and the larger ones, you want them all to have one curl going forwards and another curl going backwards. The only ones that are gonna be going towards the center are the first two of your smallest petal. So you have two curling forward, left and right side of the petal curling forward, and that's your smallest petal. And then you're gonna have four more that are curled backwards and forward. So for the smaller one, you're gonna have four that are have the corners curled forward and one corner curled backwards on four of the petals. And then you're gonna have two of your smaller petals where both the corners are folded towards the center. So there's gonna be six total of the smaller one. And then you're going to have five total of the middle one and they're both gonna be folded one, one direction and one the opposite direction and same with the larger one. So what I have next is the um, 16 millimeter um, bead. So you can use either a styrofoam bead or a wooden bead. I have a wooden bead and I'm gonna take my hot glue gun, make sure that doesn't roll away. And I'm gonna put, you could either put a little bit in the center. You can put it in the center of your bead or you can just put it on your actual floral wire. So just the floral wire, just kind of move it around so it'll start to stay put. I have my glue gun accessory kit so I can save my fingers and just make sure it is all ready to go. I'm gonna put a little dab on the inside here just to make sure it stays put. Just gonna dab it a little bit. Okay, so those are all set. The bead is ready to go. 
Let it dry for a second. And once you get the hang of doing these petals, they're so much fun just to have on hand. You just have a bunch already on hand, either whether you're going to ink it or not, just um, start creating and become a florist before you know it. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take those two that are curled towards the center and I'm going to start creating my rose itself. So put my little finger and protectors back on. And I'm going to put a little bit of the hot glue on the base of the smallest petal. Make sure it's the one where the colors, where it's curling towards the center. And then I'm just going to go ahead and lay that down there like so. So that's going to be ready to go. If you notice that it's starting to curl back away, then just curl it a little bit really quickly with your finger. And then you're going to take your next one. So before that one goes on, I just want to make sure it's nice and tight. Because this is the one that's going to kind of cover the one that I just laid down. So it's a tight bud around the bead. So you can see how that's a nice tight little bit. And then I'm going to put this time, I'm going to put the glue on the actual bead itself. I'm going to go ahead and lay that on there like that. And then you can just kind of wrap it around. So you see it's becoming a tight little bud there. Then these are the ones that are the ones that are going to be going the opposite direction. So there's one curl going left and there's one curl going forward. And then you're just going to start building it around your bead that you've already started to assemble. So as you put them down, you see how it's already starting to come to life. And you can kind of see the reason that you have one curl going that way. It just actually gives it the more realistic effect. If you want the bowl area to be a little bit bigger, you can just kind of manipulate that around with your fingers as you go along. And just kind of build it around as you go. You can see how it's starting to come to life. Now, if I could just figure out a way to make it smell as good as an actual rose, then we would be in heaven. I think that if you did some kind of oil, it might, I mean, it probably would definitely um, affect the actual appearance of your rose, but hey, it'll give it that nice scent. So as you can see, it's starting to take life and form. And you're just going to keep going around until you finish all of your six smaller petals. And you can kind of glance down just to see if you need the petal to be up higher or down lower. Just kind of go play with it as you go until it looks as realistic as you'd like it to be. Put that one on this side, and then that should be it for. And so this is where I would stop if I was just doing an individual bud. If I only wanted a one, one individual small bud like I had done for this one, then I would go ahead, stop here, and then I would put this little base piece underneath it. But since I want you to see how to build the entire rose, I'm gonna keep going. So now I'm gonna do the next petal. This is that middle size one. Put my protectors back on, because some of these bigger ones, the hot glue stays hot longer. And as you can see, it's starting to form. I mean, the colors we have are endless. Let me just show you really quick how pretty are those. These are some of the different flowers, colors that we have of our crepe paper. So that's just something that you can start getting excited about. So you can create all of the different flowers that you want to create using our crepe paper and our different flower thinlets. And they are all real, real, so realistic according to the actual leaf size and leaf shape and the way the leaves are cut is perfect for each individual flower. So these gals took, put a lot of thought into creating those. And the Livia Rose clearly knows what a rose looks like. <laughs> I just love that. I mean, she had to be the one to create the rose. There would be no question on that one. <laughs> 
And then you're just going to keep building it all the way around. I mean, this could be a cute little cabbage rose. I love that little size for a flower. So that'll be it for these middle size ones. And then next we will be doing the big one. So can you see how this is coming to shape itself? I just love how it all starts coming together. I just want to keep an eye on your little strings of your um, hot glue because you don't want them to be all stuck in the center and hanging off. So if you can see how this started to curl away, I'm just going to re-manipulate it and it already kind of comes back to itself. A few more of my larger ones and then I will show you quickly how to do the leaves. And then your flower arranging can start ASAP. Now some roses, if you want, once you do the uh, curling of the um, actual petals, you can pinch it in the center if you want, just to give it a little bit of a um, point, or you can just leave it as is. Some I do, some I haven't, so it's up to you on how you want it to look. And if you did do the point, then you would probably have a section a little heavier of the ink on that area, just so it'll be more, more of a contrast for the, that particular petal. Last one. Now, obviously, if you were using the lighter purple, you could do a lighter color, um, a darker color purple if you're going to do the um, actual contrast color edges on the petals. So, as you see, that's kind of starting to come to life. How pretty is that? Okay, so now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do the base. So for the base, I could punch a hole with one of those tiny craft hole punchers, punches, or I could just snip it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm not gonna snip it all the way through because I still want it to stay one piece. I'm gonna just put a little snip right here and just so I can have a place for the stem to go. So if you can see, there's just a little tiny cut there. It's a little slit. So I'm gonna put a little bit of the hot glue here on the base of the rose. And then the part that I just slit, take that protector off, I'm going to, quickly before the hot glue dries, <laughs> is take that one area that I slit here and I'm just going to lay it right there and have the two ends meet on the side. And then I'm going to connect it with some more hot glue. I guess that the threads of your hot glue could give it an interesting spooky effect for Halloween for um, maybe a black rose or something. That'd be kind of fun. So that's the, that's the technique of creating that base. So you just snip it and thread it through or glide the stem through the slit, or you can take uh, the hole punch and punch a hole and bring it through there like that. So that's the rose ready to go. Now let me show you how I did the leaves. The leaves are already cut. Now it depends on how you want your leaves to go. This one in particular has the grains going vertically. So if you wanted to have a more of a realistic um, leaf that goes that way, depends on the actual flower. Most rose petals, most rose leaves are flat. So that's why I did it where the, um, grain is going horizontal. If I wanted to stretch it to be a little bit longer, then I could do that. But most rose pe petals are um, just flat and uh, just like this. So it depends on how the grain of your um, crepe paper leaf is. It would stretch this way or this way. But if I want to keep it flat, I'm just going to keep it flat, which I will do for this. So I'm just going to take one of my, oops, let me drop my rose. I'm going to take one of my leaves and I'm just going to do one line of hot glue, not all the way down the center, just in a little area from the center of the leaf down. And then I'm going to take my, an additional floral wire and I'm just going to lay it down there just like that. 
So if you want to hide that stem, you don't want the hot glue and the stem to be visible. I'm going to take another leaf. And since it's the same die and was cut at the same time, you know it's going to match up mirror image right perfectly against it. So I'm going to do the same thing. Hot glue down the center. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay it there on top like that. Now you can fan it out like that if you'd like or completely glue it flat however you'd like. I'm just going to keep it like that. So what I did for the next one, another idea that you can do is take your scissor and take one leaf and cut it completely in half. So you have two individual pieces. And then I'm going to take my hot glue. I'm going to put it on the actual floral wire. And then I'm going to lay it down there like that. Then I'm going to take the other half, put a little bit more hot glue on the stem that is just connected there that I just adhered. And then I'm going to partially hide it like this. This way you save crepe paper. You don't have to waste, not waste, but you don't have to have two leaves. You have one leaf that the wire is hidden on both sides. So what you could do next is connect them like this. Just kind of bend it how you want it to be. Take a little piece of floral tape and then go ahead. You like to have your floral tape the same color as your leaves just so it stays um, realistic. And then you're going to completely cover one stem at a time. Now the heat, if you're familiar with these kind of the floral tape, the heat from your um, hands kind of softens the adhesive on the floral tape and it makes it easier for it to adhere as it goes down. You just grip it tight as you twirl it. I'm just going to cut that off there like that. And then do the same thing on this one so it will all match up perfectly. If you have any, um, any of your crepe paper, uh, we would love to see it. Any of your projects using our dies. And if you use the and share it, use the hashtag MyMakingStory. We'd love to see it, and we would definitely be able to take a peek at it because with the hashtag, that's how we look at all the fabulous things everybody's created with our dies. So I have those two stems ready to go. I'm going to take the rose that I just created with you here, and I'm going to take another piece of floral wire, or sorry, floral tape, just so it'll be all one complete unit. And I'm going to start it the same way I started it on the leaves. This stem's a little bit longer, so it's getting in my way. And I'm gonna go partially down the way, and then I'm going to connect my leaves this way. So once these are on there, Going. So now they're all connected. The stems of the leaves are now connected to the actual rose itself. And then you're just going to go all the way down. hope this isn't making you dizzy looking at it. <laughs> I'll just cut that off so we don't need to do the whole thing. So there you have it. I've got this with the two stems. They all are coordinated together because the same green was created as I used the floral tape and the same green for the base of the rose itself. Let me put a little bit more of the hot glue on the this little star-shaped base and then that will be it. So if you see the nice realistic rose with the permanent marker used to edge it, if you did just stopped after the smaller petals, you could do multiples. You can create the um, just the individual buds so the rose hasn't fully opened once you put it in water. The best thing about these is you don't need to freshen the water. Unfortunately, they don't have the beautiful scent, but here's the same technique that I showed you, but using the um, more of a sorbet color with the um, same pink, believe it or not. It just shows a different hue when it has it's on a different color um, crepe paper. And then this is the same one without any kind of um, edge to it. So there we have it. I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera up. OK, 
Okay, so I hope you've been inspired to do some new flowers with our crepe paper and our dyes. Be sure that you um, tune in and check out the upcoming videos with the ranunculus, the wild peony, and the carnations. The possibilities are endless, the flowers are beautiful, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks so much for joining us and have a great day.